All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to talk about tomatoes. We're doing a little bit of a taste test and talking about this new variety from Johnny's. It's called Abigail. And this may be one of the best tomatoes in existence or a replacement for the best tomato in existence, or at least what's really widely regarded as the best tomato that you can grow is called black, or excuse me, pink brandywine. So Abigail really is what Johnny's Seeds has taken and turned this into a hybrid version of it. And it's supposed to be so much easier to grow. You know, it has all the really good things about hybrids in them. So typically something that's more productive, produces a lot more fruits, uh, more disease resistance, but also it's supposed to have the same great, amazing flavor of a pink brandy wine. So for me, this is really exciting. I'm super excited to taste these tomatoes, um, to talk about them, because this could be really, in my opinion, a great replacement for something that is truly amazing. And I've tried, as you guys probably know, if you've seen some of my other videos now on tomatoes, I've tried so many different varieties, really just to find something better than pink brandywine. And some come close. Um, I think if I had to narrow it down to two tomatoes, I would choose pink brandywine and I would also choose black cherry because black cherry, you could use it in so many different ways. You could use it as a sauce. You could use it in the cooking. You could eat it fresh. The pink brandywines are great uh, for slicers and sandwiches and different things like that. I put them on my burgers all the time. Uh, and you could even use both of them really in a salsa. So I really, for me, in my opinion, I, I see no real other reason to grow any other tomato. <laughs> Um, I think some others make great sauce. We did that video a, a while ago where we actually made 20 individual batches of sauce. And certainly if I was trying to make the best sauce possible, there could be an argument for a different tomato like the orange banana as an example. Um, but for the most part, that is really my main goal. And so when I got this, these seeds from Johnny's this winter and planted them out this year, I was very excited to see if the flavor could indeed compete with pink brandy wine because certainly after observing the plants it's obvious they are hybrids they're not heirlooms um, they have all the great qualities that you would expect in a hybrid versus an heirloom and it's the difference is clear that's probably the main complaint people have with pink brandy wine is that it's just not really that productive because it is an heirloom um, i have over the years gotten some decent production off of those plants but i I think so far this year, look how many tomatoes I've gotten. They're really a great size. I've probably harvested about nine so far off the first round of them this year. And they're gonna continue uh, starting probably at the end of July, around July 21st, which is relatively early for a beefsteak here. That's, that's interesting. And these nine tomatoes I've harvested is probably the equivalent maybe of three pink brandywine plants at this point of the season. So one plant is outperforming three pink brandywine plants. So that's, that's pretty special. Um, now, like I said though, the real question is, does the flavor compare? Will I get good flavor out of these? Because if I don't, I don't know, really know what the point is. I'll just continue to grow pink brandywine. Yeah, they're hybrids. They produce well, they perform better. These are definitely really good performing beefsteak tomatoes. But it's all about the flavor for me. That's the most important thing. So if it's not better or comparable to pink brandywine, then I'm just gonna say forget about it. And Maybe I'll grow one of these every year just to have a really nice productive beefsteak. But we'll see. So that's the whole objective of this video. Let me try it. Here's the inside, by the way. This is one I actually cut this morning. I had uh, about two thirds of it in my breakfast. I had some polenta and had some salt with the polenta and also just added some salt to this tomato here. Uh, as a side to my breakfast and it really goes well together. If I only had some basil to go with all two of those things, I would have had a nice trifecta there. But um, so let's bite into this. Um, it's pretty beautiful on the inside and, and the pattern on the inside does match the pink brownie wines that I've seen in the past.
So that's pretty good. Um, I do think it's a little, a little bit watered down. It's not bad, but I don't think so far, really, do I think that really is up to the level of a pink brandy wine. So uh, let me try another one here. This one's been hanging out in my fridge. We won't try that one. Same thing with this one. So let's cut one that's probably the most ripe, looks the best see if we can get best experience possible. Let's try this one here. That looks great. Very juicy on the inside. Not bad. All right, let's try this one now. So it has a really nice texture to it. It's nice and smooth. Um, it doesn't feel very grainy either. It's, it's the right texture you would expect from a good heirloom tomato. The skin is a little thick, but it's not bad. Um, it's not too intrusive. It's not, um, you know, really that different from the pulp so it seems a bit uniform and i don't really notice the skin that much so that's really critical but here's my gripe is that the flavor is just not there there's a certain earthiness and chalkiness that you come that comes with pink brandy wine and i'm not picking that up this year or at least with this tomato um it's also not really having that right balance it's just slightly off So there needs to be that right acidity and sugar balance. To me, these tomatoes seem a bit watered down. And I promise you, we've had a drought and we've had a heat wave this year. So there's no reason why these tomatoes should be super watered down like this. Um, I think this is just missing some acidity in there and that right balance, and it's also missing that earthiness component that makes, I think, pink brandywine uh, a cut above the rest of the tomatoes, is really both of those two things. Um, it's not bad, but it's not at that level. And so for me, I think my review, at least so far, and I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna try this again later in the season. Uh, maybe I'll try another one here at some point and make a video. If anything changes, I'll let you guys know. But um, for me so far, this is not at the level of flavor that you would expect from a pink brandy one. Um, I think it's a actually a very good tomato. Um, so I would say it's probably an 8 out of 10 or a 4 out of 5. If pink brandy one's a 5 out of 5. Um, so it's a quality tomato, but it's not the wow factor that you would look for. And uh, for me, that I think that makes sense to grow maybe one of these, at least in this current moment, to grow one of these plants for production purposes because it's just so much more productive and it's a really good, tasty hybrid. Um, especially for a hybrid, guys, this tastes fantastic. Um, but again, having said that, it's just not at that that next level. Um, it would be nice to have one side by side to really compare, um, to see exactly how much better it is. Maybe a blind taste test would be nice one day, but um, I'm pretty good at remembering what these things taste like. Um, at least my memory when it comes to food is pretty darn good. Don't ask me about a conversation I had with somebody and recite the conversation. That's almost impossible. But um, remembering faces and food is pretty, pretty solid with that. So anyway, I appreciate you guys here for watching this one. Um, maybe at some point in the future, I'll, in the next video, if we do another review, I'll show you guys the plants. But that was Abigail from Johnny's F1 Hybrid. We'll see you guys for the next one. All right. Take care.